It starts off with Raven's family in the kitchen cooking up some delicious soul food. Raven's little brother, Corey, in the house tells the family he wants pizza instead. He don't want to eat no soul food. This shit look good as hell, bro. What do you mean? Ain't your dad a professional chef, too? That's crazy. You're fat ass, boy. We are having fried chicken, collard greens, candy yams, and cornbread. I'm whipping up some soul food in honor of Black History Month. So I can't eat pizza for a whole month? Corey in the house got a write a report or something for school. Black history report. Y'all remember those. Raven pops up now and she's trying to get a job at some cool fancy clothing store called Sassy's or something stupid and generic like that. Her and her white homegirl both apply for the job. Raven is doing great and Chelsea, her white homegirl, is doing poorly. I've examined your applications. Now I'm going to put you through a series of tasks to evaluate your skills. And I just need What kind of job interview is this? You gotta play mini games and shit? Are they paying y'all for this? That's crazy, bro. That's fucked up. Corey in the house procrastinating on his African American history project. The dad starts lecturing him about being a bad African American. Bro, you're not gonna convince this little kid to care about no schoolwork, homework. I don't give a fuck what they talking about. You still gotta try though. I get it. Shout out to the dad. But man, shut the fuck up. He don't care. Now look, we've come a long way, but you need to learn to appreciate it. We cut over to Eddie, and he's at the school with these two girls trying to get some umbop. <laughs> he barely does anything in this episode. That was disappointing. I was looking forward to this nigga. <laughs> don't worry, okay? I got connections over at Sassy's. I'm gonna get y'all some discounts, okay? <laughs> Holla! <laughs> Go in the house. Are you saying that I didn't get the job? Yeah, I'm sorry, Ray. The truth is, I don't hire black people. Mm. Chelsea gets the job and Raven doesn't. Raven uses her magic psychic powers to look into the future and she sees the white lady confessing to racism. She got magical powers, by the way, if you've never seen this. Matter of fact, y'all remember my friend Freddie from the second grade? One day while Freddie and I were at the park, his dad came charging over all of a sudden and snatches Freddie away. Telling him he's not allowed to play with black kids. Yeah, I never thought of Freddie as, as different or, or white. He was just my friend. <laughs> Damn, there's so many racisms in this episode. Although, to be honest, I wouldn't want my kid hanging out with your ass either, Orlando Brown. It is pretty racist, though, his story. Lil Bow Wow got some bomb ass pussy. Oh believe people are still so prejudiced. Oh, when they're out there, Chels. Yeah, Ray, that's intense. Well, I'm off to work. What? what? Wow, bro, that's crazy. That's really how it be. Honestly, y'all should let her ass work there. She's terrible. She would probably fuck up their profits and shit, I guess. she probably break something. I don't know, You're man. actually going back there? Please, I'm not working for somebody like that. Fight the power! Peace out. Hey yo, what the fuck? Meanwhile, Corey in the house is in the house. He on the computer, looking at God knows what. You know how this nigga do. Come on, Corey in the house. He's falling asleep during his homework. Then Frederick Douglass crawls out of his monitor like the fucking little girl off the ring. It's terrifying. Also, Frederick Douglass, he a all-star. It's me, Frederick Douglass, from that black history you find so boring. <laughs> Hey yo, what the fuck? Ragtime music. Scott Joplin's downstairs. Now we got a party. Well, if it wasn't for this kind of music, you wouldn't have your kind of music. Thurgood Marshall, the first black Supreme Court justice. Sojourner Truth, human rights activist. Corey in the house is having this boring ass fever dream and he learning about history and stuff. All the black history and stuff. How do you even know all these facts? You weren't paying attention in school. That's the whole conflict. You guys don't know who no damn a Scott Joplin is. How is this in your brain? I don't realize how many cool things came from our people. Nice to meet you. I gotta 
better get to work. He meets all these black all-stars, and now he's ready to write his report, I guess. No studying or nothing. He just gets right to it. He knows all the answers now for some reason. This episode of Princess Cinema is sponsored by Me Undies. You remember being a little kid on Christmas? Remember running around in your drawers all day and all night all the time? Well, you can still do that, actually. Having a pair of brand new drawers from MeUndies just feels great. They're the new hotspot for all your underwear and PJs and everything. Get your loved ones some brand new drawers this holiday season, y'all. The new MeUndies holiday collection has a ton of crazy-ass exclusive designs and everything from PJs to socks to boxers. They got the classic plaid designs on here, too, for your grandpa. There's so much stuff. Available in extra small through 4X, MeUndies has got your whole team covered. All their gifts. You can get something nice for yourself, too. Get you a nice soft robe or something. I don't know. To get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Prim. That's MeUndies.com slash Prim. Go get you some matching PJs for you and your boo. Thanks, MeUndies, for sponsoring. Okay, back to the racism. Meanwhile, Raven is talking to her parents about what happened with that white lady. They're trying to figure out what to do about it, but Raven just wants to give up. She don't think one person can make a difference. But no, that's not true, y'all. She a dumbass idiot. Don't listen to her. Even if they did believe me, I'm just one person. If Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King had the same attitude, we'd still be sitting in the back of the bus. Mm. They call some reporter lady, and she decides to send Chelsea in undercover to secretly record some racism. They hide a spy camera in this ugly-ass Hillary Duff type hat. The mini camera is in your hat. So when Chloe says something incriminating, make sure the hat gets it. Chelsea Daniels reporting for her first day of work. <laughs> Now Raven comes into the store for whatever reason, wearing a Steve Harvey costume. Is this necessary, bro? Why are you doing this? You could have sent in one of your parents or Corey in the house or somebody. Where'd you even get all this shit? It's an elaborate ass disguise. You have a ball cap in your house? I want you to keep a really close eye on that guy over there. Certain kinds of people need a little more attention. Stop following me around this motherfucker. Nah, yeah. This nigga do look weird as fuck, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Annie in a kid's clothing store? Clearly something going on with this nigga. That don't mean he's stealing, though. You can't follow him around. It's not cool. Raven pretends to be an international manager or whatever she said. The lady falls for it? No way, bro. She's a racist, right? She definitely would have asked some more questions. I don't think she's taking your word for it. I have been named... New general manager of Sassy's International, they said. You do hire people of color, don't you? <laughs> Orlando Brown then comes in and asks for an application. The lady is real nice to him and she says she'll give him a job. Then she turns around and confesses some racism to Chelsea. Good job, we got her, y'all. Orlando Brown, you did it. You didn't need Raven here at all. She didn't need to be here. He could have just asked for the application. So, uh, when's this uh, new guy start? He doesn't. This application goes in the garbage. The truth is, I don't hire black people. And there you have it. The manager, Chloe Hunter, has been fired, and the company has issued a public apology. So that vision she had, why was it from Chelsea's perspective? You didn't see it from this angle. You saw it from 20 feet away on this young ass TV. Damn, it's a little ass TV. How can y'all even see this shit? They got that lady canceled and now they all hanging out eating soul food together. Mr. Baxter, I did not know black history it was so delicious. Go in the house. This nigga Corey in the house fat ass is eating a tub of butter. He says Raven inspired him or whatever. Episode over now. Wait, are they all drinking milk, bro? What the fuck? What part of the soul food is that? This is very weird. Get some red Kool-Aid in here or something. So who'd you finally write about? Someone close to me. You? <laughs> Please. I picked Sam Jackson. <laughs> I picked the ice cream! Yes, no. yes. <laughs> Wait, wait. 
by the way, he meant Sam Jackson, the nigga that invented ice cream, not Samuel L. Jackson. They both good picks though, you can't go wrong. This episode's message is pretty basic, it's what you'd expect for the most part. It's always weird when I see these cartoony racists all the time instead of the more realistic ones, but this is a kid's show, you gotta make it simple for the kids. I'm just saying, every show does this. It works here though, it's fine here. I feel like just because it's Disney too, they are low-key pandering. They got a bunch of sketchy behind the scenes stuff themselves and that's putting it nicely. I mean, half the cast of this show went crazy. I can only imagine what's going on over there. It's still a good message for the kids overall. This is boring for the kids though, overall. This whole episode was boring as hell. They didn't even try to make it entertaining. It's just their mandatory black episode. We did all the black stuff. It happened in the black episode.